What is going on guys, Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den and in this video I'm just gonna be doing a one cut of the overhead press, okay? We did this video for Elite FTS, did really well, so I figured we'd do it for this channel uh, and I have a lot of overhead press videos which you can just watch the playlist right here, uh, but some of you guys are new, so let's get to it. Uh, real quick, my background, competitive straw man, I've competed internationally on Team USA. Uh, I am a national champion for 2019 in USS straw man for the heavyweight class. I put 425 pounds over my head. Um, I'm right around a 400 pound lock clean and press. I've strict pressed 315. I'm very passionate about pressing, especially in the sport of straw man. Okay, you need to have a big press. So I try to dissect it and become the best I can with this movement. So let's cover the basics. One of the basics that I think is super overlooked right from the bat is where the J cups are, right? If we screw up where the J cups are, and we try to unrack this barbell and we're hitting them or we're exerting too much energy to get the bar off the rack, that's not gonna set us up for a good press. So we always have to remember uh, that our base is included with the J-Cup setup here, okay? So um, we wanna make sure that we have the perfect height. So for me, getting that height is gonna be where I can get under the barbell and when I release that tension, I can easily step away and clear the J-Cups. Okay. If they were uh, too high, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna hit the J cup and then that could throw me and be unstable. And then I'm worrying about other things besides the press and we wanna keep this as simple as possible. The other thing is if they're too low, now we have to get under even more and exert more energy to get the bar off the rack. We don't wanna do that, okay? We're trying to conserve as much energy and be as efficient as possible. So, J cups are set up exactly where I like them. Next thing we're gonna talk about is gonna be uh, the grip, okay? I'm a fan of having a more narrow grip. And there's a few reasons why, okay? The first one is that I think it just helps my shoulders, all right? Maybe it's not the same for you and I advise you guys, disclaimer, that, you know, to try other things. This way may not be the best way, but it's the best way that works for me and it's what I find is the best for people that I coach and train with. So typically I used to press out here or, or wider than where I am now and I find over time my shoulders were getting a little bit beat up pretty quickly. Uh, so for me, bringing a more narrow grip has uh, been you know, just better overall. So we get that narrow grip, okay, we're gonna take it off the rack, and this is where we're at. The other reason I like this narrow grip is because I get to utilize my triceps, all right? When we're out wider, it's gonna be more shoulder dominant. When we're in closer, we get to utilize those triceps as we're pressing. The other thing actually, and we'll talk about it right now, is if you, can, when you get really tight, you're loaded up like a spring, you actually can kind of push off your lats, all right? Now, if your lats aren't uh, that big, obviously you want some more specific lat training, but when we're in this locked and loaded position, we kind of get a little bit of a spring going there and we can accelerate through. And what I find often with a lot of people when they're pressing is they get stuck kind of right around here with that lockout, all right? So by keeping everything tight and utilizing those triceps over time, that seems to not be an issue anymore. So. I'm more of a fan of a more narrow grip um, and kind of a narrow grip for everything. You know, when I'm bench pressing, when I'm overhead pressing, just because in the sport of straw man, overhead press is gonna reign king for me. So I don't wanna spend a lot of time with a wider grip bench. I do a lot of things more narrow and close just to help strengthen those triceps to translate over to the overhead press, okay? So that's the first thing with grip. Now, if you're out pretty wide, you know, and you go here, it's pretty drastic, guys. Just maybe start doing the thumb with the way, and then over time, maybe go in, you know, a, a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch over time, and we'll get there, close grip, okay? So now that we've established that, we have our close grip, we're gonna walk it out. The thing right here I wanna talk about is gonna be your feet and your base, all right? So often what I see people doing is they're too narrow, so their feet are right here, all right? Or the opposite, where they're too wide. So I like to just have that Goldilocks, you know, right in the middle, uh, find that medium ground, which I'm gonna be probably shoulder width or a little bit wider than shoulder width. As you can see, I have a slight toe flare going out here. So I want a bigger base, because if we look at a pyramid, right, pyramids have a nice, strong, big base, and we're gonna do the same thing with our press. So feet are gonna be shoulder width, slightly wider potentially, depending on you, toe flare, and we're gripping the floor with our toes, okay? So that's very important. Once again, starting from that base. So I got my feet rooted in the ground, okay? I'm secure, I'm not rocking into my toes, I'm not sitting back into my heels. I got all points of contact on the floor. 
Notice how we're not even talking about the press yet because there's so many other things that we need to establish before we even get to the main pressing component. So from here, before I even begin to press, I'm squeezing my glutes, squeezing my legs, and keeping everything super tight. If I let loose, okay, we have wiggle room for instability. So when I stay everything tight, butt squeezed, quads are locked, now I'm ready to rock and roll. All right, so from here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tuck our chin back. So chin is gonna come back, we're making that beautiful double chin face. And we're gonna press this bar straight up, almost grazing our nose. The closer we can actually get this bar to our face, the better. Uh, and we're pressing straight out. And it's almost like you're pushing a window open. And then we're gonna look through that window and we're gonna say, what up to all our homies out there who are watching us overhead press? Because there's just tons of people out there watching overhead press. So, this is where we wanna be, okay? Now you'll notice that my ear is in line basically with my bicep, okay? I'm not overextending the bar backwards and my whole head is visible. I'm not pressing the bar out in front of me. Okay, we're overhead. And the reason we like to be overhead is because we have our wrist stacked over our elbow, which is stacked over our shoulder, which is over our torso. And there's a lot of bone on bone structure. It keeps it super stable. So I always use the example of, if we were to hold the bar out in front of us like so, okay? Or directly over our head, which could we hold longer? I'm willing to bet this position overhead is gonna be more stable and we can hold a lot longer, meaning it's gonna be more efficient, all right? So that's the premise of the press to get the bar overhead. Now we bring the bar down, okay, all we're gonna do is control that eccentric, get the head out of the way, bring the bar back down, okay? So everything's squeezed, everything's tight, pressing straight up, head comes through, back down, okay? And we're pressing, we're just looking straight forward. I'm not looking down at my toes, I'm not looking up towards the bar, okay? I'm just looking straight forward. So pick a spot on the wall, okay? Press straight up, and then right back down. Very simple guys, um, not too much to it, but I think some of those tips, especially building the base, is gonna be super valuable. Uh, and it's little details that can go a long way to create that stability and create that strength. The one thing that I do wanna cover real quick is gonna be grip, okay? When we're gripping the bar, I like to have it in the hard part of my palm here, okay? So, palms on the bar, then I'm gonna wrap my hands around, all right? And I'm gonna get into that position, and it's nice and secure. We don't wanna have the bar resting in our fingertips and we don't want it to be uh, kind of in the base of our fingers as well. So we wanna have a nice firm grip and we're squeezing the bar as we're pressing straight up, just like so. Ideally, this bar is gonna be resting on our collarbone. This is an empty barbell. Once I add more weight, I'll get the bar down to touch my collarbone, um, but if you guys can, always have it touch your collarbone just so we're getting full range of motion. Uh, but that's pretty much it guys. I wanted to keep it super basic and give you guys some pointers uh, that you can implement in your training right away. So we start with the J-cups, we go to the feet and the base. Okay, we're working on keeping everything tight, breathing, bracing, working on that stability. And then from there, getting into that good rack position, keeping that closer grip. Elbows are gonna stay nice and tight. We're driving straight up as we drive up Okay, we're getting our head through as the bar excels past our face, and then we're getting our head out of the way as it comes back down, and then just making sure that we have a nice, strong grip on the bar. So hopefully these tips are helping you guys out. What we're gonna cover in the next video is gonna be pressing mistakes, the five pressing mistakes that I see. So right if you're not watching this video, make sure you go over and watch the second one. Before you do that, make sure you like and subscribe, uh, but let's just get right to it, guys, all right? So, Stay in Lean Mean Strike Machine. I'll see you at the next video. Peace.